You want to hear another comedian? You want to see another person bring Absolutely. it to the stage? Yeah. Cyrus Steele <laughs> is an acquisition specialist for Equifax who spends his days working with banks and credit unions that report financial data for small business loans. Now, Cyrus told me what he loves most about his job is building relationships with clients and the fact that his office provides free water. So, so if you're looking to recruit him, he's apparently easy to please. He said, had he not taken the accounting route, he might have actually become a teacher. Having worked with him and listened to his material, I think he also could have considered a career in stand-up. I think you'll agree as well. Let's give it up for Mr. Cyrus Steele. How's everybody doing? Uh, a little bit about myself. Um, I'm from Savannah, Georgia. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Savannah, Georgia is a little city right off the coast of Georgia. Um, you may have heard about Savannah. We were recently in the news because of a hurricane, uh, Matthew. Yeah. So growing up, we were always under a hurricane warning or a hurricane watch. You know, but what would scare me more than the hurricane was how they would talk about it. Like in the news, they would be like, you know, you want to try to stay out of the eye of the hurricane. That used to scare me. Like, why would you give this human trait to something that's not human? So you can imagine me as a kid, 10 year old kid in my room praying to God, please, please don't let us get the eye of the hurricane, Lord. Please don't let us get the eye of the hurricane. Let us get the elbow of the hurricane, Lord. Let us get the elbow. Or, uh, let's, get, let's get the pinky toe of the hurricane, Lord, let's, please. Or if we do get the eye of the hurricane, Lord, let it, let it be a lazy eye, Lord, let it be a lazy eye. Uh, speaking of which, I, I do have a lazy eye, which I know some of you in the front row, it's throwing you off right now, because you don't know who I'm looking at. Uh, don't let it throw you off. Uh, <laughs> a lot of setbacks with having a lazy eye. You know, I'm very grateful to work where I, where I do, but uh, I was a little worried, you know, because, you know, just to give you a little perspective, sir, you know, when you were born, you know, you opened both your eyes and both eyes said, time to rise and shine, time to go to work. Uh, what happened with me is uh, one eye said, time to rise and shine, time to go to work. The other eye said, I quit. And we haven't heard from him ever since. That's what happened to me. <laughs> uh, you're laughing too hard, sir. It hurts my feeling. Yeah, that's what, that's what happened to me. And, and you know, cause I feel like, you know, sometimes when, I, when I'm going to apply for jobs, like the hiring manager takes one look at my lazy eye and he's like, you know what, if he can't get that to work, <laughs> what more can we expect of him? <laughs> I do travel a lot. I like to travel, I'm grateful to have a job that allows me to do that. Um, but I, I do, I, I like going on road trips. Uh, they have like this new app uh, called Waze where you have these, uh, yeah, a lot of you tried it out. Yeah, I found out, I did a little research. One of the, it's like this GPS voice, a celebrity GPS voice. But one of the top downloaded voices I found out was Arnold Schwarzenegger. This disturbs me. I'm a big fan of Arnold Schwarzenegger, but the voice, like I would think there would be some sort of language barrier there. Uh, like who would choose this for directions? Like, and, and secondly, that has to be the most violent road trip ever. That's just Arnold and you and him yelling at you for the next four to six hours. Get out of the lane, get out of the lane. Don't go into the other lane. Come on, listen to me. Come on, the cops are coming. The cops are coming, get into the chopper. Ah, ah. I don't need that in my life. <laughs> I don't need that. I need something calming and soothing, you know? Like Barack Obama, I feel like that would be a calming and soothing voice. Uh, but then the more I thought about it, uh, that's probably not the voice you want on your GPS. Uh, think about it. You got five minutes to get to work. You got a fork in the road. You're in a hurry. The last thing you want to hear is, uh, look, uh, let me be clear. Right? Uh, you could take a left. Or you could take a right. But uh, what you don't want to do, what don't I want to do, Barack? Uh, you don't want to sit here. 
Uh, which is what you're doing right now. Well, can you tell me which way to go? Uh, well, you could take a U-turn, but it's, uh, it's like I told Sasha Malia Barack, I don't have time for a Sasha Malia story. I'm trying to get to work. But speaking of the whole uh, political thing, I, I did think about during this election, I think I'm gonna run for office. 2020, yeah, I got 2% of the vote right now, that's cool. Thinking I might run with Kanye, 2020. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because all you need is a platform, okay? That's all you need, you know, something that you stand for. Y'all want to hear my platform? Good, because that's all I wrote. Uh, here's my platform. We're going to get rid of ISIS. Like, we all want to get rid of ISIS, right? Right? Yeah, here's how we're going to get rid of ISIS, people. We're going to start letting Liam Neeson answer the phones um, when we do the hostage negotiations. Yeah, because, you know, Liam, he'll be like, I don't have any money. But what I do have is a certain set of skills that might prove themselves very dangerous for someone like you. What's that? Yes, I can also save you 15% by switching to Geico. I think he can do it. You know, some of you are thinking, well, that, you know, he, he, that's not realistic, Cyrus. So I got one better for you. I say we let him have Peter Griffin from the Family Guy show. Right? Just to annoy ISIS. Just to annoy him. Be like, hey, uh, yeah, Peter Griffin here with you. Just uh, wonder if one of you guys could reboot my computer. We are not tech support. We are ISIS. Do not call again. We'll kill you. Easy there. Easy there. Maybe we got off to the wrong step. Maybe we got off to the wrong step. Maybe I should have started with an ISIS breakup. <laughs> See what I did there? Hello? Hello? I think it could work. Some of you are not convinced. So I say we go with Jerry Seinfeld then. I think he would annoy ISIS with all the questions. You're like, hey, what's going on? I mean, what's the deal with ISIS? Who are these people? I mean, Taliban, that's a scary name. Al-Qaeda, that's a scary name. ISIS is basically the word is twice. Who came up with that? Well, there are a bunch of guys sitting around going, hey, the name of our group is, 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 and some guy was like, that's it. That's the name of our group, is, is. If you really wanted to bring the pain, I'd say you could always go with Chris Rock, right? Be like, everybody's talking about ISIS. Oh, ISIS, go get me. What is I going to do? Oh, Lord, what is I going to do? Is it just me? Is it just me? Or does ISIS sound like a bonics? Like, ISIS is going to be good today. ISIS is going to be good. Sounds like a line from the movie to help. ISIS is good. ISIS is kind. ISIS is purdy. Thank you. Wow. It's really gonna mess with my head, y'all. Now, uh, speaking of the whole election thing, you know, I, I did have a lot of Trump jokes, a lot of Hillary jokes, and uh, I realized after the outcome, like, you know, we, we gotta come together because we have more in common than not. Uh, we do. Uh, I'm, I'm really big on unity, and, and I, one of my heroes is Dr. King. And I, I recently saw this movie, Selma, uh, a movie about Dr. King and that Marxist Selma. And a lot of people during the movie were talking about how much pressure it was to be Dr. King, how much pressure he was under. And I always thought his kids had a lot of pressure. You know, can you imagine for a moment just being the son or daughter of Dr. Martin Luther King? Like you hadn't cleaned your room all week. <laughs> and one of the greatest speech writers, I mean, we still study the I Have a Dream speech to this day walks into your room, Mr. I have a dream himself, and says, now I came in here on Monday, told you to clean your room, came in here on Wednesday and Thursday and still your room was a mess. Friday and Saturday rolled by, but today is Sunday and I brought my belt to help speed up that day when all of your toys, the black toys and the white toys, the blue toys and the yellow toys can join hands and sing the words of that old toy spiritual. Clean at last, clean at last. Thank God Almighty we are clean at last. Thank you, God bless.